Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Say, Amos, what is the greatest name in communications? The Columbia Broadcasting System, Andy. Well, how do you like that? That's the network we is on. Oh, you said... The Amos and Andy Show, written by Joe Connolly and Bob Mosier, transcribed and featuring Amanda Randolph, Johnny Lee, Ernestine Wade, Tommy Moore, Will Wright, Lud Gluskin's Music... Yours truly, Harlow Wilcox, and starring radio's all-time favorites, Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, Amos and Andy. Well, New Year's Eve is the time everyone likes to put on his best and go out for an evening of fun. And with New Year's only a week away, Sapphire and her mother are looking at ads in the paper for evening gowns, while the kingfish views the procedure with distaste. Oh, look at here, Mama. Ain't that a beautiful dress? Oh, it's just exquisite, daughter. <laughs> love a dress like that. You know, these new French styles was just made for my figure. <laughs> yeah, you got the French figure, all right. You got a shape on you like the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> you divide at the base and tape us to a point. What did you say? Yeah, and you was a little spread out around the root of the pay, too. <laughs> well, I wouldn't talk about no figures if I was you, George. With that sad face, that bloated stomach, and that flat-footed waddle, you look like a tired penguin hunting for a place to lay an egg. <laughs> huh. Ain't no use for me to be looking at dresses no way. We ain't going no place New Year's Eve. What you talking about? We was going over to Aunt Sarah's in Brooklyn like we done last year. Been New Year's Eve with the family. We is only going there because we got no place else to go. Yes, you never take me no place. The last time we went out in evening clothes was when the boys come home from the wall. Yeah, I remember that. It was ten years ago, and the boys were singing, There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. Huh. It was 35 years ago, and the boys were singing, It's a long way to Tipperary. <laughs> well, it's disgusting. We don't ever go no place, and we don't know the right people. You're right. Everybody else in town is going to the J. Worthington de Pice's New Year's Eve Ball. Does we ever go anyplace? Does we ever get invited anywhere? No. Yeah, but I can't afford all the clothes you need. <laughs> Even a groundhog gets out more than sapphire. <laughs> sure, yeah. All a groundhog's got to do is to crawl out of his hole. You don't have to spend a couple of hundred dollars making it look presentable. George, that's the trouble with us. Here it is, the new year. The last day of the old year. And all year, you ain't done nothing nice for me, and I ain't done nothing nice for you. Yeah, well, it's like follow the leader. If you don't ever do anything nice for me, I might do something nice for you. The fat chance that I got ever that happening. <laughs> if there's any niceness in the family, it comes from me. 
Because you're the poorest excuse for a human being I ever met. You is stupid, lazy, ignorant, and uncouth. And there ain't one person in the whole world that's got any respect for you. You ain't nothing, you hear? Nothing. I'm going in the bathroom. Holy mackerel. To think I just married Sapphire because her father owned a butcher store. <laughs> just think if I'd listened to Bernard McFadden, I'd have been a happy vegetarian today. Oh. <laughs> Kingfish, take it easy here. How come you're getting so upset just because you wasn't invited to the DePeister's ball? Well, it's not that, Andy. It's what Sapphire said. On account of me, she ain't been able to take her rightful place in society and all that stuff. Yeah? Hey, have all, you know, we started out great. Look at the big social wedding we had back in Marietta, Georgia. Yeah, that was a high-class hunk of nuptulating, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sapphire's papa threw a real brawl. After all, he had the biggest butcher business in town, you know. Yeah, that was quite a sight when you come out of the church. Sapphire's six brothers making that archway with their cross salamis. <laughs> oh, yeah, then. Uh, nothing was too good for his favorite daughter. Yeah. Well, I guess Sapphire's pretty upset about not going to the New Year's Eve ball at the DePeisters. Where's you going to go? Well, we're going over to Aunt Sarah's over in Brooklyn as a sort of a family tradition, you know. Oh, all the relatives go over there to Brooklyn, huh? Yes, Aunt, and I really hate that affair. The worst thing is they seats all the men at the table according to how well they're doing in business, you see. Oh, yeah. Well, where do you usually sit? Well, I tell you, Aunt, if that dining room didn't have a bay window, I'd be eating out on Flatbush Avenue. <laughs> yes, Aunt, there's a mess. Yeah, and it passes the plates down the table, and you should see my plate by the time it gets to me. Yeah, the relatives really snipes at it on the way down, huh? Well, I'll say it does. Last New Year's Eve, I wound up with a half a turkey wing, 18 olive pits, an air trumpet, and a Stevenson button. <laughs> yeah, well, it's awful, Kingfish, having a sponge like that. Well, I tell you, Andy, I wish there was some way, though, that I could win back Sapphire's respect. Sure heard it. I got some high-class friends and all that. Well, I'll see you around, Kingfish. I got to get back to my board now. Well, so, so long, long so long, Anna, so long. Oh, me. If I could only get an invitation to the Deep Places Ball, I could... Say, wait a minute, Chair. Why can't I write out one myself and mail it to Sapphire? Yeah, there ain't no chance of a kicking back on me because on New Year's Eve we got to go to Aunt Sarah. Yeah, let me get a type right out here. Society, here we come. Oh, yes, George, it came in the mail today. Ain't it wonderful? Yes, yes, it is. Miss D. Peister types a nice handwriting there, don't she? <laughs> well, George, maybe I done misjudged you. This invitation shows you is respected by the people that count. Yes, it's a shame we can't go, and I could introduce you to all the other society friends I know. But, George, we can go. Yeah, I'd like to have you meet all the, all the, all the, oh, 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 excuse me there, Sapphire. You was messed up on your grammar there. You was used the uh, naked infinity where you should have used the undraped participle there. <laughs> no, George, I said we can go to the ball. Now, wait a minute. You know we have to go to Aunt Sarah's. We does that every New Year's Eve. Yeah, I know, George, but I done already talked to Aunt Sarah, and she's so happy about this invitation. She says this shows at least some of her relatives amounts to something. Yeah, but wait a minute, sure. Uh, we we uh, got to go to Aunt Sarah's for dinner. I planned it. I, I already done bought the bicarbonate. I got to go. <laughs> now, George, you has always hated Aunt Sarah. You said she was a deplorable old hag. No, no, you must understand me. I say adorable old hag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a beautiful old hag. Now, I love listen, it. George, we have this invitation, and we're going, and that's that. Why, well, I didn't even order the new dress. Now, I'm going in and tell Mama the good news. Holy mackerel, what a mess. I wonder if they could extradite me if I took it on the lamb to Guatemala here. I... <laughs> Every day, a thousand homes catch fire. Ninety percent of those fires are caused by carelessness. 
Take stock now. Is your electrical equipment in good shape? How about old newspapers and magazines? Do you clear them out regularly or leave them piled as fire hazards? Be careful, too, of cleaning fluids and make a rule against smoking in bed. Remember, don't gamble with fire. The odds are against you. Well, I think I'll walk back to the Ruman house and take a little nap. And then I can... Hmm. The show is getting cold. My spine feels like a bone popsicle. Why, if it isn't Andy Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excuse me, miss. I don't think I had the pleasure of... I can't recall, uh, uh, I don't relic, uh, recollect, uh, 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 hello. <laughs> Why, Andy, you don't recognize me at all. Well, now, wait a minute, Gia, wait just a minute. Uh, didn't we go through the tunnel of love at Coney Island once? Well, I don't remember that. Yeah, well, I guess you ain't the same one. <laughs> if you had, baby, you would have remembered it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Sadie Hunter, the debutante. Yeah, <laughs> how is you, Sadie? Oh, Andy, darling, I'm so glad I ran into you. Yeah, likewise, because <laughs> you make a nice collision. <laughs> Andy, you know what I have right here in my purse? No. An invitation to the DePeister's New Year's Eve ball. Well, that's nice. Yes, Andy. I got an invitation, and I got an evening gown. But I lack just one thing. Well, don't worry about it, honey, because whatever it is you lack, it ain't worth having. <laughs> oh, no, Andy. I mean a bow to go with. Uh, would you like to see the new year end with little old me? Honey, big fat me would just love to see it end with little old you. <laughs> now, that's so sweet of you, Andy. Now, suppose you hold the invitation. You're the man. Yeah. And anyway, I always lose things. Yeah, well, okay. I'll take it and stick it in my pocket here. It's formal, you know, white ties and tails. Oh, natural, natural. Uh, I got two or three of them. <laughs> Why, that's fine, Andy. It's tomorrow night at the Lenox Hall. Now, um, suppose you pick me up about eight-ish. Honey, I'll be right there on the dot-ish. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hmm, the DePeister's ball. I wonder if I ought to brush up on my dancing. I wouldn't want to show up there and Lindy hop myself right out of the social register. No, oh, me, that phony invitation done backfired on me. So if I expect me to go to the ball and I ain't got no invitation, no chance of getting to, uh... Well, come in, Brother Andrew. Hi, Kingfish, hi. Say, I want to ask you something, uh... You know a good place I could take dancing lessons? Uh, dancing lessons? Yeah. I has got an invitation to go to the DePeister's Ball. Yeah, well, uh, 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 you has got an invitation to the DePeister's Ball? Yes, sir. Right here in my pocket. I'm going with Sadie Hunter. She just gave me the invitation. So you has got an invitation to the fancy dress ball, huh? Yep, right in my pocket. Sit down, Cinderella. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so you got an invitation right there in your pocket, and you want to take dancing lessons, huh? Yeah, that's right. Andy, welcome to Arthur Murray's Uptown Branch. <laughs> you mean that you can teach me dancing, Kingfish? Can you teach me the samba and the rumba, or that new dance, the mambo jumbo? Oh, no, no, Andy, you don't get the mambo your jumbo at these high-class affairs, you know. Yeah. Oh, the ball like this, the, the big thing is the walls, Andy. Walls. I tell you, Andy, there ain't nothing like swishing around the floor to the beautiful waltz music of that great woman composer, Joanne Strauss. <laughs> that, uh, that's the thing to do, huh? No, Andy, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I tell you what, stand up there a minute. I'll give you a little demonstration. Yeah, uh, like this? Yeah, that's it. Now tell me, Andy, does you know the Murray Widow? 
No, but I used to know a grass with it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I told him about the song from the motion picture, the one where Mary old Lasagna did the singing there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I know the song. Oh, the song. Yeah, well, explain to me about the waltz, Kingfish. Okay, now, uh, in doing the waltz, you hold your left hand out. That's mm, it. Yeah. Now, uh, you put your right hand here on your hip. Uh, and now I take my right hand, and I put it right there on your hip, right on your pocket. <laughs> mm, uh, so far, this ain't nothing. Maybe it's better with a gal. <laughs> no, no, Andy, now close your eyes. Close my eyes? Yeah, certainly, Andy. Uh, you got to get in the spirit of the thing. Now, close your eyes, and we'll waltz around the floor to the tune of the beautiful Murray with a waltz. Now, you got your eyes closed? Mm, yeah, let's go. All right, here we go. do dee do dee do dee do dee do What'd we stop for, Kingfish? I just remember, Andy, the correct position for the waltz is with my hand on your other pocket. <laughs> How long is this session going to last, Kingfish? Well, just as long as it takes me to pick... I mean, you to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, let's go. All right, now close your eyes again, Anna. Okay. All right, here we go, Walton. do dee do dee do Hold it, Kingfish. Hold it right there. Hold yeah, it. Yeah, what's the matter, son? Just a minute now. I got my eyes closed, but you got a hold of one of my hands, ain't you? That's right. And your other hand is around my waist, ain't it? That's right. Well, then I think that Mary Wooder is going through my pocket. You know? <laughs> That's just an optical illusion. And uh, always happens in the walls. Now, don't pay no attention to it. Close your eyes. Now, here we go. Okay. do dee do dee do dee do dee do Okay, and the mission completed. Lesson number one over. Go ahead. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Kingfish. I'm just catching on to this thing. Hurry up and give me lesson number two. Come on. Uh, well, lesson number two. Well, tell you what, Andy. Just sit down on the chair there a few minutes. Okay. Why must I sit here, Kingfish? Well, one of the most important things of all, Andy, is... If you're going to a ball, uh, you got to practice sitting out dances, you see. <laughs> Arthur Murray devotes seven lessons to that alone. Yeah, you ain't socially acceptable unless you squats correctly. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you just stay there and practice sitting out dancing. And I got to go out. I'll be back to the to dancing stuff later. So long. Okay. Getting tired. I wonder what happened to the king. Uh, oh, hi, Amos. Hi. Uh, hi, Andy. Say, hey, what you doing sitting in that straight back chair up against the wall there? Oh, I was practicing sitting out dances. And you know something? I must be a wall flower. Ain't nobody asked me to dance in 20 minutes. <laughs> Andy, what in the world is you talking about, son? But I've been taking dancing lessons. You see, I'm going to the De Peister New Year's Eve ball with Sadie Hunter tomorrow night. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Say, Andy, it might be snowing. Maybe I could drive you and your gal to the dance tomorrow night in my taxi cab. Oh, that'd be great, Amos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what time do the thing start, Andy? Let me look. Let me look on the invitation here and make sure I got a... Uh... Uh, uh, what's hmm. the matter? Now, wait a minute here. The invitation ain't here. That's funny. It was here when I was dancing with the kingfish. You was dancing with the kingfish, and uh, your invitation is now missing, huh? Yeah, now, there's a funny thing. Look, Andy, uh, why don't you put two and two together there and see what you got? Yeah, that's just what I'm going to do. Two and two. Hey, Amos, give me a pencil. I ain't too good at arithmetic. <laughs> well, George, I'm all set for the ball tonight. How do you like my new dress? Oh, it's a beauty, Sapphire. Yeah, just a beauty. You're going to be the belle of the ball. Uh, just one thing, though, with your loose pivot tooth, I wouldn't blow them New Year's Eve horns too hard. <laughs> you liable to toot the thing loose and end up at midnight gumming your way through old anxiety. You know? I'll be careful, George. Oh, I'm just so happy. You're getting this invitation to the DePices shows that people does really think something of you. And, George, on account of this, I... Uh, well, I really has respect for you. Respect for me? Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Oh, that's, uh... You've got to have... Uh, wait a minute, I'll get it, I'll get it. 
I'll go change my dress. Uh, George Kingfish Stevens speaking. This is Andy Kingfish. My invitation to the DePices New Year's Eve ball is gone. Well, what's that to me? Look, Kingfish, I know you has got to think. Well, now, wait a minute, then. Listen, if I don't get the invitation back, I'm calling the DePices and telling them you stole the thing and not let you in. Oh, now, wait, okay, okay, and a fine pal you is. What good is friends if you can't steal from them? <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, I want that thing back. Okay, I got the thing here, and I'll bring it over to you right now. Don't call the deep oysters. That's better. Goodbye. Oh, me, what a mess. George, who was that on the phone? Uh, 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 nobody, honey. Uh, uh, listen, I got to go out. But, George... Uh, no, you're... honey, I'll see you later. So long. Hmm. George certainly is acting strange. He's acting just like he did on our honeymoon before he broke the news to me that we had to hitchhike our way back from Niagara Falls. When the National Safety Council recently requested listeners to send them their traffic gripes, one of the most frequent complaints of citizens all over the country was this. Too many drivers stop for a light halfway or completely across the pedestrian crosswalk. Such stopping makes it dangerous for anyone to use the crosswalk. Be courteous. Don't block the crosswalk. Well, uh, sorry I had to call you down here to your office on New Year's Eve, Calhoun, but it's it's terribly important. Well, Kingfish, when I got your call, I had 12 extremely hungry relatives at the table. And I had just took a big, juicy 24-pound turkey out the oven, right in the pan, gravy and everything. But I rushed down here anyway. Yeah, but uh, ain't you afraid to leave that turkey with all them relatives? Is you kidding, Kingfish? I got that bird with all the fixings locked in the trunk of my car. <laughs> I see, uh, you brung it with you, huh? Yeah. Till I get back, ain't one of them can lay a fang on it. <laughs> well, now, here's the thing, Calhoun. Uh, I done told my wife we was invited to the Deep Isis Ball, yeah. but I didn't think we could go, you see. Yeah. And now she planned on going, and we ain't got no invitation. Now, what must I do? Well, now, Kingfish, I, I can't sympathize with you. You've been brought to this sorry state because of cheating and lying. Yeah, but Calhoun, you got to help me, man. Oh, no, I... sir. The only thing that'll get you out of this mess is more lies. And the, <laughs> and the only time a man is justified, the only time a man should resort to a lie is in an extreme emergency. Well, Calhoun, if you'll help me, I'll give you 20 bucks. I hereby declare this mess an extreme emergency. <laughs> Fine, Calhoun. Now, what can I do? If my wife don't get to that dance, she's going to lose all the respect for me that she has. Well, now, wait a minute, Chair. Now, hold on. Uh, suppose you were to get sick. Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, suppose at the last minute you, you had a sudden attack of pneumonia. Yeah, there's a lot of germs jumping around this time of the year, ain't yeah. there? Yeah, that's a great idea. You know what? Yeah. I'll get right on home and fake up an attack of pneumonia. Oh, Calhoun, you is a genius. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess I better get on back to my New Year's Eve party. Uh, yeah, Calhoun, but uh, ain't you afraid that turkey might dry up and spoil on you in the trunk of your car? Yeah, <laughs> I ain't worried about that, Kingfish. I got my little nephew Gregory locked in the trunk, basting the thing. <laughs> Here my apartment. Hmm, I see through the keyhole there. Mama's sitting there in the living room. I'll try this pneumonia thing out on her. I just got to convince them that I'm really sick, so I don't want to go be too subtle about it. I'll open the door here and get down on my hands and knees now. Uh, now I'll crawl in like I was in agony. Oh, oh, me, oh. Well, how do you like this? The poor fish has come home fried. 
Oh, no, no, Mama, I ain't fried. I'm sick. Yeah, I can't even stand up, Mama. Well, I'll help you to your feet. What's wrong with you, anyhow? Oh, I got pneumonia, Mama. I'm sick. I'm sick. Oh, look at me. My eyes is watering. I can hardly stand up. Look at the big circles under my eyes. So what? You always look sad, saggy, and baggy to me. <laughs> oh, no, Mama. I just come from the doctor's. I got pneumonia. Yeah, I got a terrible temperature. Doctor says it's 112. Uh, 112? The thermometer only goes up to 110. Yeah, Mama. Well, you see, the doctor couldn't use a thermometer. Oh, man. I had to take my temperature with one of them weather barometers. <laughs> a weather barometer? Yeah, he stuck the thing in my mouth, and he said the only thing that was saving me was a cold front moving in over my liver. <laughs> now, look here. Sick or not sick, you are going to that ball. You ain't disappointing Sapphire. Well, I wouldn't dream of it, Mama dear. I'm I going to be brave, and, well, I'm I, I going to go. I'll do the best I can. While we is dancing, I, I'll just try to scream in time to the music, you see. <laughs> George Stevens. You don't look sick to me. And if... Uh, oh, I wonder who that is at the door. There, now. Just take it easy, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> oh, I'll be all right, Doctor. Well, good heavens. What's wrong? Sapphire and Dr. Farber. Oh, Mama, I'm afraid I hurt my ankle. Yes, Mrs. Smith. Your daughter had a little accident. She slipped on the ice getting out of a cab. Seems to have sprained her ankle. I'd bandage it up in my office, but she'll have to stay off of it for at least a couple of weeks. Oh, dear. Oh, child, I'll help you right into the bedroom. Oh, hey, wait a minute, Joe. What's going on here? What's, what's this? Oh, George, I done sprained my ankle. Ain't this terrible? We won't be able to go to the DePices Ball tonight. Mm. Oh, my New Year's ruined. Yeah. Oh, why are you here, Doctor? You better have a look at George. He's sick, too. Oh, well, what's the trouble, Stevens? Oh, uh, nothing, Doctor. Uh, all of a sudden, I feel wonderful. Uh, I never realized before what a great cure a sprained ankle is for pneumonia. I never realized. <laughs> now, let me prop your ankle up, your sapphire. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Mama getting you the aspirin. I, I was afraid this ain't a very happy New Year. Uh, well, thank you, George. Oh, George, I feel terribly sorry disappointing you like this. I I know how much you counted on going to the DePices Ball. Well, I had uh, counted on going. Uh, I feel pretty bad about not going, but what can I do? Ooh. You done sprained your ankle. It ain't your fault that you was awkward. <laughs> well, George, I, I'm going to find some way to make it up to you, George. Uh, yeah, well, I hope you remember that. Now, I better go in and phone my apologies to the DePices. They'll be sorry. They might cry or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I won't mention, though, that it was your fault. I'll give you that break. Oh. <laughs> well, George, I, I really thank you for being so big about the whole thing. Uh, well, uh, here's your mama. I'll go make the call. All so. right. Uh, well, here's your aspirin, daughter. Oh, thank you, mama. Honey, this is just awful. You laid up in bed for two weeks. Oh, no, mama. I'll be up sooner than that. But Dr. Farber said... Mama, Dr. Farber was kind enough to help me. You see, Mama, I know we wasn't invited to the DePices Ball, but, well, this is New Year's Eve, and George say we never do nothing for each other, so what could be a better time to turn over a new leaf? For George's sake, I, I got Dr. Farber to help me pretend I had this sprained ankle. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox again, suggesting that you tune in this CBS radio station each evening, Monday through Friday, for the Amos and Andy Music Hall. You'll hear Amos and Andy at their very best, plus interviews with famous guests and lots of good popular music. Your local newspaper will give you the time of the Amos and Andy Music Hall. So remember to tune in and enjoy the fun and music and laugh with Amos and Andy. Oh, and Happy New Year, everybody. That's right, folks. My partner, Charles Carell, and I want to wish you and every one of you the very best New Year you ever had. We sure do, folks. And remember, we'll see you tomorrow night on the Music Hall. (laughs) 
Be sure to be with us at the same time next Sunday for the Amos and Andy Show, transcribed and directed by Cliff Howell. Now stay tuned for Army Strokes, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Of the CBS Radio Network. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.